from the earth, from the water, come the elements of nature. And man, through the science of chemistry, uses these elements to create for himself a better way of life. From DuPont come better things for better living through chemistry. Now, the DuPont Show of the Month. <laughs> Greetings to you, my lords and ladies of all ages everywhere. Patrons of the arts, particularly the black ones of sorcery and witchcraft. The tale you are about to witness is a simple story as ancient as time itself. Its characters are simple folk with golden hearts, just like you and me. Especially me. My name is Sui Generis, and I am a magician by trade. I have charms and spells to set your head a whirl, and I will stick at nothing to achieve my end. I have evolved a plan to make myself the lord of mankind, a stratagem so sinister, so evil, that it even stupefies me. I shall stoop to every villainy, shatter every golden heart, if it serves my ends. My horrid machinations begin in medieval China, the wondrous cafe of Marco Polo. In this wondrous land, there lived a poor widow and her son, a boy named Aladdin. They dwelt near the marketplace in the fabled city of Peking. Or a turkey born in Turkistan, or a slave that's off the African, or a teapot early Ming. Come to the supermarket in old Peking. If you want to buy a kite, or a pup to keep you up at night, or a dwarf who used to know Snow White, or a frog who loves to sing, come to the supermarket in old Peking. Sunflower cakes, moonbeam cakes, Gizzard cakes, lizard cakes, pickled snakes, pickled eels, fit for any king. If you want a bust of jade, or an egg that's more or less decayed, or in case you care to meet a maid for a nice but naughty thing, come to the supermarket. If you come on a pony, we can park it, so come to the supermarket and see Peking.
to meet, or a rickshaw with a sassy seat, or a painting slightly indiscreet that is simply riveting. Come to the supermarket in Old Peking. If you want some calico, or a gentle water buffalo, or a glowworm guaranteed to glow, or a cloak inclined to clean, come to the supermarket in Old Peking. Soup, seaweed soup, noodle soup, poodle soup, talking crows, with the croup, almost anything. If you want to buy a saw, or a fish delicious when it's raw, or a pill to kill your mother-in-law, or a bee without a sting, come to the supermarket, you can come on a camel, we can park it, too. come to the supermarket and see me. Forecast the shape of things to come. Let me unlock your future for yes. you. I'll unlock my own, thanks. All right, be an ostrich, stick your head in the sand. But, oh, I'm fed up with this miserable business. But why? You have your own establishment, no boss. Yes, no customers either. Do you know how many horoscopes I've cast this week? Exactly two. And both of them refuse to pay until their fortunes come true. I think I might be able to put a little business your way. How so? Well, I have a dazzling design, and I need an able assistant. But it must be the right uh, height and weight, and not too burly. How about me? No, no, a much younger man. His shoulders should not be broader than that. And he should be about as tall as, um, as tall as, uh... I'll be back in a moment. Make way for his majesty! Make way for the emperor! Make way for his majesty and her oh so sorry, my Make way for the emperor and his daughter, the pretty princess. The traffic jam, let the royal parade progress. Make way for the emperor and his daughter, the pretty princess. Show your devotion to your protector and his daughter. For be condemned to stew in a bath of boiling water. For us can be merciful. They can also be merciless. Oh, make way for the emperor and his daughter, the pretty princess. Oh, I've never seen the princess before. Oh, she's lovely. Young man, come closer. You were most courageous to risk yourself in my behalf. It was a privilege, my lady. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. How are you called? Aladdin, if it please, your highness. He does. Aladdin. My name is Ming Chu. And I thank you again. What is your station? Do you work here? A mere speck of dust. One of your majesty's most humble subjects. Nevertheless, I... I shall not forget you, Alain. Hey, young 
fellow. Young fellow. Yes, you're over there. Come over here. Come over here. Congratulations, my boy. The gods have smiled on you. What do you mean? Why, the great things are in store. Uh, the stars predict a wonderful future. Wouldn't you like to know about oh, it? Well, yes, sir, but I'm in a hurry. Oh, nonsense. It'll take no time. Besides, there'll be no charge. Come inside. Well, here. all right, then. Come on. Now, now, sit down. Sit down there. That's oh. right, my boy. Now, first of all, I must have one or two details. What's, uh, what's your name? Aladdin. Aladdin. Hmm? Uh, and your father? Mustafa the tailor. Mustafa. But he's not any, uh, alive anymore. There's just my mother and I. I see. And things aren't going too well, I take it. I, I mean, financially speaking. Well, we stay alive somehow, but it's hard. My mother weaves cloth, and sometimes oh. I work as a porter in the market. Go on. Oh, but I've got bigger ideas. I want to travel, be an important personage, and have a large retinue. Oh. If I could tell you some of my dreams. Well, the stars can make your dreams come true. How? Raise up your eyes and believe. Gaze at the stars when at night you're alone. And from out of the blue, select one for If you want your past to be lined with gold, trust your destiny to your star. If you long for glory and fame untold, trust your destiny to your star. When for someone's lips you have yearned and yearned, but you live without hope, so you will soon discover your love is returned if you try. sunflower seeds and, and sprinkle them all over the tray. Any way will do. That's, that's the idea. Oh, 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 oh I say that, that. Oh, that's very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, yes, that's amazing. That, that's extremely weird. What is it? Will it come true? Well, felicitations, my son. This is a, a remarkable chain of events. A long-lost relative of yours, a gentleman of the highest consequence, returns to Peking today. Now, his arrival spills indescribable good fortune for you and your mother. You mean he's bringing something, a present? I, I don't understand. Well, you're not supposed to. Simply obey him unquestioningly. The rewards will be fantastic, I repeat. No matter how curious the obligations he asks you to fulfill, do as he says. You will be repaid a millionfold, nay, a trillionfold. And it's all here in these seeds? No, 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 no. In the stars. That's what these seeds represent. Oh, oh I see. I, oh, I just hope you read the message right. Young man, are you questioning my astrological skill? Oh, no, no, sir, not at all. Why, I wouldn't dream of questioning you. I, I'm very grateful to you, Oh, sir. that's all right, my boy. Now, you stop around and, and let me know how things develop. Always like to keep in touch with my clients, especially the, the skeptical ones. Good day, Aladdin. Good day. Good day. Very neat. Well, forgive the intrusion, sir, but I saw you rescue our sovereign. May I compliment you on your quick wittedness? You displayed true heroism. It wasn't anything, really. Ah, your modest as well as courageous. You'll go far. Do you live near here by any chance? And not far away. Why? Oh, well, I was looking for someone, a relative of mine. I wondered if you might know him. A tailor named Mustafa. What's the matter? You said Mustafa. I meant Mustafa. He is my brother. I haven't seen him these many years. He has a son. Let me see, what is his name? Aladdin. Could you perhaps direct me to them by any chance? Well, 
I don't have to. That is, you don't have to. I'm Aladdin. You are Mustafa's boy, my nephew. Oh, yes, that's right, sir. Oh, the gods be praised. And tell me, how is my beloved brother? He, uh... uh sorry to say he's no longer with us, Uncle. He died six years ago. Oh, as I... as I... Feared. Oh, the, the bitterness of destiny. Tell me, did he, um, did he speak of me, uh, perhaps, before, uh, before? Well, not that I rem... Oh, yes, so often. Oh, very often, yes. Oh, heaven be praised. And your mother, that lovely lady, as sweet and gracious as ever, well, a paragon among women. Yes, sir, she's... Let me meet her. I want to embrace her again. Oh, yes, sir, follow me. Oh, she'll be happy indeed. Oh, but a homecoming without a homecoming present. It is too insupportable. Let me see. We will take a nice, plump fowl, and perhaps a carp stuffed with plums and ginger. We will pick up a sherbet on the way. In the meantime, we could do with a few lychee nuts. <laughs> If you trust, and you must trust your destiny to your star. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, that was no dragon. That was my wife. <laughs> Do have a little piece of this and some morsel. please, please. I couldn't eat another bite. Oh, well, if you insist, perhaps you might take a thimbleful of peach brandy. Oh, my head's buzzing as it is. Aladdin, you've had enough of that pickle shark spin. It's very rich. Ah, oh, don't scold the boy. It does me good to see him eat. Ah, oh, to think that I'm here, home at last, safe among my own kinsfolk. How long is it since you were last in Peking, Uncle? Forty-five years, alas. But I, I was younger than you when I started on my journeys. Oh, you must have seen some, some marvelous sights. Unforgettable ones, my boy. Simply incredible. The treasures of the Mughals, the Egyptian pyramids, the majestic Himalayas. Well, that's what I want to do, travel. Oh, I'd never come back to this old dust heap of ice or things like that. Oh, how unthinking youth is. And yet, you see, it is, uh, that is the way youth is. But you see, my boy, I think that if you could only just decide to, to perhaps serve... Uh... Well, we're, we're very happy to have you back. I mean, I'm sure Mustafa would have been pleased, I think. You need say no more. Tell me, how could I please you and Aladdin? I know I have an idea. I have need of an assistant for a project I am undertaking. Of course, he must be the right one. Yes, by heavens, you might be the very lad. Well, what is it? No, I can't disclose that at present. All I can tell you is that it involves obedience and fortitude. You must obey my orders implicitly. No complaints or questions. Do you understand? Well, yes, sir, I can do that. Yes, and then your rewards will be great, wondrous, beyond your wildest dreaming. Oh, Uncle, just try me. The astrologer predicted it would happen this way. What astrologer? Now, about the journey. What journey? Oh, nothing, just a few miles outside the city. Oh, stroll in the country, nothing more. Oh, well, I'm not sure. Aladdin's never been away from home before. Now, there you go. Mother, you still treat me as if I were a baby. And bless her mother's heart, say I. You need not worry, dear sister-in-law. I shall care for the lad as if he were my own son. But he's all I have. Mm. Good evening, all. I trust I do not intrude. Well, no, no. Come in and meet our distinguished relative, Louis Generis. This is Wu Fang, our neighbor on the upper staircase. I am honored. Ah, what a, what a lordly repast, and with what gusto you have devoured. But would you soil your palate with a small drop of inferior peach brandy? Thank you, thank you. I also perceive a few slivers of goose remaining from your feast. A pity if they became rancid. We've eaten so much, thanks to my brother-in-law. Uh, brother-in-law, did you say? Yes, my beloved Mustafa's own brother. But of course, the resemblance is unmistakable, as alike as two snow peas, eh? Mustafa was short and fat. 
Yes, but the same noble brow, the angle of the chin. Oh, I'd recognize him anywhere. It, it delights me to see you again, sir. We've met before, I take it? Many times. Many years ago. To be sure. <laughs> Long before Aladdin was born. Ages. Mm. And you are still engaged in the... Uh, 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 uh... My usual calling, sir, uh, picking pockets. Oh. Mm, I specialize in custom work. Wallets, handbags, any sleight of hand that yields a profit. Indeed, and you have done well at it? To tell you the truth, no. I'm still not a full-fledged member of the Pickpockets Guild, merely an apprentice. Ah, but your fame extends far beyond the borders of this kingdom. You're too kind. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, do I gather that in your work you, uh, Roman, uh, travel? Yes, I uh, travel. Oh, the ideal pastime for a gentleman of leisure. Travel broadens one's horizon, opens new vistas. Well, you see, that's what I've always said. My uncle wants me to take a trip as his assistant. Mm. <laughs> but my mother thinks I'm too young. Nonsense! Grand training for the boy. Enrich his character. Make a man of him. <laughs> Why, he'd run into all sorts. Uh, officials, swindlers, brigands. Brigands? You mean he might be kidnapped? Of course not. No, it simply means the boy would depend on his own resources, stand on his own two feet. Uh, the very essence of my thoughts, a uh, masterly analysis. Yes. Oh, it's a wonderful chance for me, Mother. Oh, I could do the things I've always dreamed about. I know, but I... On second thoughts, I may be, perhaps, that you are a little immature, a little uh, too, too young for the post. Oh, really, I'm not, Uncle. I'm very mature, and I'm very strong, too. And believe me, Uncle, I'm trustworthy, too. Mm, it's, a, it's a very responsible post for a mere youth. Uncle, just try me. I'll measure up. You wait and see. Yes, well, of course, ordinarily I would say no. But as it's a relative, well, I'll take a chance. Well, I don't now, know. Now, opportunity I... like this may not occur again. I have learned one thing, but a decision has to be made, whether in business or love. Make it. Well, I don't know. Don't dawdle. Strike while the iron is hot. You know, when I was a baby, a playing, sweet grandmama said, my pet, there's an ancient Mongolian saying, that you never, never should forget. Opportunity knocks but once at the door. Opportunity knocks but once at the door. Opportunity won't knock twice or thrice or anymore. Opportunity knocks but once at the door. So when it knocks, don't hesitate, don't pause. But grab it quick, because, 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 because. Opportunity knocks but once. Let the happen at someone hunt. Opportunity knocks but once at the door.
Now that I have a cat's paw to do my bidding, an unsuspecting lout I can twist around my little finger, my nefarious scheme proceeds apace. Our journey carried us many miles from Peking, across swollen rivers and sun-baked deserts, through swamp and forest and mountain gorge. At times, Aladdin would complain of his privations and falter, but I cleverly allayed his fears. Needless to say, I had long ago decided his fate once he served my purpose. <laughs> Rest a little while. I, oh, I've got a big blister on my heel. Now look here, Aladdin, if you're going to complain and whimper every foot of the way. I'm sorry, Uncle. I, well, I thought we were near our destination. We have reached it. Here? Oh, there's nothing here but rocks. Listen here, Aladdin. When I brought you along on this junket, it was on the express understanding that you would obey, obey my orders implicitly. If I know that you're going to hector and cross question no, like no, a no, sulky little boy. I don't need to be any trouble. Put your pack there. Go and fetch some firewood, leaves, anything that'll burn. Hurry! Yes, sir, right away. Two pinches of cobra's venom, one pinch of dried peacock's blood, fold into fire. Caution, the slab will close when the sands run out. Put them there. Guardians of the flame, ye spirits, both gracious and malign, who hold all cosmic secrets in your custody, disclose, I command you, the gateway to the flame. Two pinches of cobra's venom, one pinch of dried peacock's blood, my one, two, one, Touch it, it will go out. Bring it to me. Bring it to me! Have you got it? Well, 
lamp right here in my house. Give me a minute. The time is running out. Help me out first. Give me a lamp. Well, give me your hand. I'll go. I'm not going to you, Mr. Goldfight. I'll give it to me. The time's running out. Give me. Give it to me. California to Needham, Massachusetts, 3,065 miles. It's a big country, a country of vast distances and massive, rugged grandeur. A country of mammoth bridges, giant dams, of great, turbulent cities. A country with tremendous natural resources and the skills to use them. Oil, forests, coal. A country with buildings that soar high into the sky. A country with almost 400,000 miles of railroad track. A country of great ports and harbors, of rolling plains sweeping out of the west. A country big in its legend, big in its outlook, big in its ideal. Yes, this is America. And America is big. A country with a growing population of eager, active people. 170 million of them. And they have big ideas about what they want in life. For themselves and for their children about the comforts and conveniences that are so much a part of our modern way of living, about the kind of homes they want for their families, and the standards they set are very high indeed. To meet these standards, to fill the growing needs, our productive resources must always be equal to the demand. Yes, America is a big country, a growing country, and our needs grow with it. Our great industrial institutions must keep pace in scope and in scale to maintain and advance our standard of living. To this end, large companies like DuPont join with concerns of all sizes and all types to fill the needs of our expanded population. This is how we can help keep America great and keep America strong. As DuPont seeks to do, by bringing you better things for better living through chemistry. Well, my precious protege Aladdin got himself into a pretty fix. Word has reached Peking that Aladdin is dead, and his mother is inconsolable with grief. Nobody else is particularly concerned about him, though. Ah, yes, there is one. In the pavilion of the Tranquil Blossom, as she listens to the ancient fabled dance of her handmaidens. Full of despair and anguish, the lovers fled over hill and dale. Living on roots and berries and existing as best they could. And then one day, their awful secret was revealed. Such was the anger of the gods at the coolie's audacity that they turned him into a hideous toad on the spot. As for the maiden, she was changed into a gnarled old chestnut tree. the lovers in these wretched fables always being changed into frogs or firewood. Can't they ever get married and live happily ever after? But, Your Highness, a romance between a noble and a peasant. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about it? It's blasphemous. Quite right. It's contrary to nature. 
Love is contrary to nature. It is the very essence of it. Forgive my impertinence, Your Worship. But could you imagine yourself interested in a commoner? <laughs> I could imagine that. But you've never even met one. How could you know what he'd be like? Oh, I... I let my imagination stray. Well, I couldn't picture myself in love with one. <laughs> <laughs> These things never work out. The eagle and the sparrow cannot mate. They're worlds apart. <laughs> Besides, think of your august parent. He would never allow a commoner to admire you, let alone approach you. No, I... I don't suppose he would. Your Highness has an obligation to the lower orders. Your conduct sets the standard of decorum for the whole kingdom. I'm afraid you're right. Now go, please leave me alone. so hopeless, and, and yet I... They told me that such an unheard of event could never but never occur. Yet all of a sudden, as if heaven sent, my darling, there his celestial ancestors. Oh. There, there now, dear. Don't take it to heart so you mustn't. My poor boy, he was all I had. Well, try one of my cookies, dear. They'll make you feel better. He was always so considerate, always picking up stray dogs. Yes, he was a good boy. I never should have let him go with that man. I had a feeling he'd get him in trouble. I can just see my angel lying in a ditch somewhere. He may not be dead at all. They may only be holding him for ransom. Well, I thought you liked my relative, mm -hmm. that you approved of Aladdin going with him. Me? Oh, on the contrary, dear lady. No, I suspected this self-styled brother-in-law of yours the moment I laid eyes on him. But f why should he single out my Aladdin? Oh, lots of reasons, lots of reasons. He may want to sell him into slavery. Oh. Or use them for some sort of medical experiment. <laughs> Who can say? Who can say? I'll, I tried to warn you against them, but I never like to drive a wedge between relatives. Yeah. What have I done to deserve such cruelty? Oh, Aladdin. Aladdin, where are you? Merciful gods of my forefathers, help me. 
I entreat you, help me. Who are you? I am the genie of the lamp. You are the master, I the slave. Your will is my command. I want to get out of here. Make a wish and it will be done. Get me out of here, I want to go home. <laughs> aren't eating anything, my dear. It's at times like these that you must keep up your strength. Why, I'm certain that if Aladdin was sitting here now, he would surely agree with me. Oh, Phantom! Oh! Return from the dead! Phantom! 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 Have you eaten anything, oh my poor Am I right, Mother? There's nothing wrong with you. Why, of course there isn't. Didn't I tell you he'd be back safe and sound? I almost didn't, though. What? If it hadn't been for the genie, I'd still be in the cave. I'll get you something to eat. You, uh, you, uh, said you were in a cave, eh? Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. Where my uncle took me, only he wasn't my uncle at all. He was a sorcerer. Ah. I found that out. Oh, to be sure, to be sure. An enchanted cave, I suppose, full of indescribable treasures? Well, that's right. How did you know? Oh, just a random guess. Uh, this uh, genie you mentioned, a big, tall, spooky chap, was he? Spooky? Mm -hmm. He was tremendous. Why, he suddenly appeared right here. Here, oh. have some soup. Oh, dear, you must be starving. Yes, yes. Sit down, eat a little something, my boy. He's a bit feverish, that's all. If I were you, I'd put him to bed with a flaxseed poultice. He's a little mixed up, you know what I mean? Oh, dear, do you think he's really sick? Ah, just a mild hallucination, that's all. A few hours sleep, you'll be as good as new. <laughs> now, <clears throat> you rest up, my boy. Forget about those genies, eh? <laughs> See you later. <laughs> genies? <laughs> I heard him. Oh, you both don't believe a word I said. I do, darling, you're exhausted. Now I'll prove it to you. You see this? That's what he had me fetch out of the cave at the top of the tomb. It, no, 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 let me finish, down. Mother. This lamp. This lamp is the greatest treasure in the whole of Peking. In all China. I know, Now, we've got to go it carefully. No, we better hide it somewhere else, and we mustn't lose it, whatever happens. Yes, yes, I'll remember. Oh, Mother, you're not well, listening Evan, to me. Well, please, you mustn't excite yourself. Rest yourself. Here, I'll be right there. Well, where are you going? I just want to get a few herbs from the pharmacist, a potion to help you sleep. Stay where you are, I'll hurry. Nobody believes me. They won't believe I met the princess either. Yet her image has been haunting me day and night ever since I first saw her. Oh, Ming Chu. I'll never love anyone else. The thought of you rings my heart. Since I gazed at you so temptingly near, I adore you. There could never be love more sincere. I adore you. So the day may dawn when I might appear and implore you. To repeat the words I hunger to hear, I adore.
No. I, I don't know if you remember me. We met in a cave recently, remember? Master, my destiny is yours. Your every wish is my command. There is no task so difficult I cannot perform it. No, I, I'm afraid even you can't help me. Believe me. There's nothing on earth beyond your reach, however momentous or picayune. But this... Yes? Is there any way you could influence, or, or rather help me to attain to a person? A lady of very high station. I, no, I, I daren't even mention her name. Speak up now! There are no secrets between a man and his genie. Who is she? The daughter of his imperial radiance, the son of heaven. But the princess Minchu. And does this person look upon you with favor? Who could aspire to one so divinely beautiful or so exalted? Her face is like, like a magnolia blossom. And her hair imprisoned moonlight. And her lips. A jade lotus bud. Very well, then. Prepare to manifest your devotion. Where? Why, in the Forbidden City, of course. What? Why, I, I'd be decapitated if I so much as well, profane the air she breathes. We deal with emergencies when they arise. <laughs> I mean, excuse me, Your Magnificence. Excuse you? What for? Perhaps I... Perhaps I shouldn't be here. Would you rather be elsewhere? Oh, nowhere else in the world, Your Majesty. This is how I always dreamed it would be. When I saw you again. You... You've been thinking about me. Will Your Highness give me leave to speak? Yes. But on condition that you stop calling me your highness. I told you, my name is Ming Chu. Oh, but I dare not call you that. Then I command you to. Ming Chu. Yes, Salah. You remembered my name. Yes. Though I feared I might not see you again. Oh, Ming Chu. From that first instant you smiled at me, I... You've never been out of my thoughts a moment. Well, I didn't think there could be anyone on Earth as... as radiant and lovely as you. It's probably very indiscreet of me, but... I ought to confess something, too. Yes? I've thought constantly of you. Have you? Oh, have you, Ming Chu? Since I gave... So temptingly near, I adore you. I adore you. There could never be a love more sincere. I adore you. I adore you.
I can't bring myself to say it. I have no right to. Are you afraid to ask me whether I love you? You needn't be. Oh, my precious one. Will you be mine? Oh, Aladdin, I... I want to so much. I'm afraid it's impossible. My father would never allow it. But if I asked his celestial altitude, if he gave his consent... Oh, but you don't know my father. He, he might listen to you, but he might get terribly angry and, and inflict some dreadful punishment on you. Well, still, if you let me see him for just a moment, I, I could tell him that you loved me. Oh, but you, you don't know my father. He's a very unpredictable man. Well, I'd run any risk. If I thought there was any chance of winning you, me, Joe. Aladdin, I'm afraid if, if anything ever happened to you. I've got to take the chance. If he'll only grant me an audience, perhaps... Well, perhaps I can convince him. All right. But promise me you'll be cautious. I will. He's holding court in, in the hall of the Imperial Phoenix. The thought of you will bring me courage, Lynch. Aladdin. I shall think of you every moment. And pray for you. You do love me. thinks he can circumvent me, does he? When I'm finished with him, by all the demons above and below, he won't find two matching bones in his body. I'll show him what one gets for crossing sui generis. <laughs> it used to be in the old days. It's a lot easier and more convenient today. Now we enjoy the luxury of modern living. No mess, no bother, less work. Now we have refrigerators and freezers. All kinds of food kept fresh and wholesome through refrigeration. But what made modern refrigeration possible? The cooling agent DuPont Freon. DuPont Research developed ways to produce this basic material at low cost and in large quantities. Freon has some unusual qualities. Watch what happens when this fresh rose is placed in liquid Freon. The liquid Freon is 50 degrees below freezing, so this fresh rose is frozen instantly. Although this beaker looks empty, actually it contains Freon gas. It won't burn, and it has no odor. The safety of Freon makes it the ideal cooling agent for your refrigerator. And Freon serves you in many other ways. One of the most important is air conditioning. Air conditioning, to give you year-round climate control, to keep you cool and comfortable to reduce moisture, dust, and pollen. DuPont Freon cools the air safely and efficiently. You work and live better with air conditioning. You work and live better because of Freon fluorinated hydrocarbon. And Freon contributes to better living in another very different way, aerosols. In aerosols, Freon pushes out such things as shaving ladders hairsprays, perfumes, and other beauty aids. They're even used for spraying paints and lacquers. DuPont makes the basic material Freon, which has helped create a whole new industry. Today, there are more than a thousand companies making and selling different types of aerosols that help us do many things faster and easier. 
Aerosols, air conditioning, and refrigeration are three important ways Freon contributes to your better living. To produce this basic material in large quantities at reasonable cost, DuPont invests its resources, manpower, and technical skills. This is how DuPont brings you all of its better things for better living through chemistry. After station identification, we'll return to Aladdin, the DuPont show of the month. Watch closely now. You see what blood-curdling fate befalls any ragtag and bobtail who dares interfere with my plans. Good morrow, sir. You know this town well. Could you tell me where I could buy a dozen lighting fixtures for my own use, of course? I certainly. There's a very good discount shop close by. Ah. Ah, oh, that's the very kind I want. I would like a dozen of those lamps. I will call for them later. Now tell me, is this the right um, total? Uh, for the lamps themselves, yes. But that doesn't include the taxes. Taxes? Oh, yes, taxes. There's 25% additional for the peaking commodity tax. Oh. And another 10% for the imperial head tax. Oh. And 4% for the special city forbidden sales tax. Oh, but all this revenue, you're quite sure it doesn't go into his pocket? Oh, no, 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 he wishes it did. No, it go, goes straight to the royal treasury to support our revered emperor. Oh, then I don't begrudge it. A man of his attainments, his wisdom, cannot be expected to live in penury. Oh, heaven forbid. An emperor's entitled to his little luxuries. That's how one can tell he is an emperor. Of course. What good is a jewel without its proper setting? The Emperor is fond of marble dragons, so he ordered tons and tons of marble dragons. His extravagance nobody can deny. No wonder taxes are high. In every room he wants a golden Buddha, and it takes a lot of gold to make a Buddha. Though no, to estimate the cost we wouldn't try. No, no wonder, wonder taxes are high. Yet we work, 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 Till our clothes are all cracked. We don't even have a workman's compensation. Act. His Majesty delights in throwing parties. So we have to furnish food for all his parties. When your monarch is a social butterfly. No wonder taxes are high. Oh me, oh my. No wonder taxes are high. His grace can only sleep on yellow satin. So each night he has a change of yellow satin. Though we want him to enjoy his hush up by. No wonder taxes are high. He likes to juggle emeralds and rubies. So he cornered all the emeralds and rubies. His collection is a knockout to the eye. No wonder taxes are high. Yellow we work, work, work for a minimum fee. We don't even have a break to take the morning tea. Our master loves to ogle pretty dancers. He already has a thousand pretty dancers. But today he come and dared a new supply. No, no wonder taxes are high. Oh me, oh my. No wonder taxes are high. He likes to look at fireworks in the evening. So we're forced to shoot off fireworks in the evening. And so many that they clutter up the sky. He drinks a foreign drink that's known as brandy. So a caravan arrived and brought him brandy. It's too bad his royal throat is always dry. No wonder taxes are high. Yet we work, 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 work till we're covered with crime. crime. But he wouldn't think of paying us for overtime. His highness heavy reeks of heavy perfume. And his concubines adore his heavy perfume. It's a shame the way they splash it on the guy. 
the wonder catches a high. Oh, me, oh, my, the wonder catches a high. Show me one other pickpocket in Peking with my dexterity and style. Oh, I know, I know. There isn't anything I can't lift if it isn't nailed down. Yeah. Uh, but yet I can't get ahead in my profession. What is it? Is it something personal about me? Oh, I'm a failure. What's that? Eh? I didn't hear anything. Eh? I thought I heard Aladdin's footsteps. Mm -hmm. Oh, Fang, mm -hmm. I'm dreadfully worried. Mm -hmm. Where could Aladdin have gone in that condition? Maybe he fainted away somewhere. Now, people don't just faint away. They either drop dead or they're run over by an ox cart. And if anything like that should happen to Aladdin, you'd hear about it soon enough. Oh, you That's a strange voice, huh? I trained you lamps for... Someone on the staircase, a peddler. Oh. You lamps for your old worn-out ones. <laughs> Greetings, folks. Do you want to have a bargain? Huh? I trade wonderful new lamps for old, tattered, and battered, worn-out ones. Yeah, how's that with no money involved? No, 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 no. I show me any old, battered lamp you like, and I will give you this in return. Aha, uh -huh, an antique collector, are you? That's how you make your profit. No, I'm just a friend of humanity. I believe in shedding as much light as possible. Now, are you quite sure that you haven't got, perhaps, an old, battered and tattered lamp around somewhere? No, we haven't anything of that sort. Why, well, sure you do. What about the one you told me about, the one Aladdin found in the cave? No, no, he wouldn't be interested in that. Yes, 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 yes of course I would let me see. Oh, it's an heirloom. We don't want to part Look at it. It's just a curiosity. This is exactly what I meant. An old, battered piece of junk. I know, but my son told me it was valuable. Yeah, he was out of his head at the time. Don't you say anything against Aladdin. And bless her mother's heart, say I. Oh, you know, I... Your voice is familiar, I'm sure. I've heard it before. No, you're quite wrong. This is the first time I've been in this neighborhood. Oh, he's a complete stranger to me. I know everyone in this district. And now, about this lamp, as you have a sentimental attachment for it, I tell you what I will do. I will also throw in a string of cash. <gasps> so you have this wonderful new lamp and some money to buy your son a present with. Oh, do you think I ought to? It's a steal. <sighs> Done. Blessings upon this house. May the gods give you long life. Old lamps for a new one. New lamps for an old one. Your exalted worship, the governor of Wai Chow craves your merciful indulgence. Very well, I will deign to listen. O oh, most compassionate son of heaven, and rainbow of earthly goodness, I bring you unending assurances of fealty from your loyal vassals in Wai Chow. Dispense with the ringing formalities. What is your tale of woe? My tale, sire, I have no grievance. All is serene. All rice is bounteous. Every brook is gurgling. Yes, I hear them in your voice. Come to the point. Alas, Your Worship, I must confess your divine intuition is correct. Sad to say, we will be unable to render the usual cash tribute to the Imperial Treasury this year. How regrettable. The money was stolen by bandits, I dare say. Exactly. I had just verified the total. When it is this time for you, my eyes are already brimming with tears. Chen Ling? Your Lordship? Arrange to have the soles of this unfortunate feet tickled with the imperial bamboo until he remembers where he concealed the tribute. Mercy, all highest! Think of my dependence! I already have, or I should have arranged to have you suffocated with the imperial mattress. Remove him. <laughs> <laughs> I must see the Emperor. Let me go, I tell you, I must see him. What is this unseemly fracas? 
9,000 apologies, your beatitude, but some non-entity, clearly a slave to the puppy, insists that he see you on a highly personal matter. Since the poor fellow is obviously bewitched, make enough holes in him to permit his demons to escape. At once, Excellency. Uh, the only thing is, he claims that it vitally affects her rosy effulgence, the Princess Ming Chu. The mere mention of whom you are aware should have warranted his tongue being torn out. I, I know, sire, but he swears that it is... Uh, cease your piping. Anyone with such monumental effrontery merits our august inspection. Bring him here. Well, young man. Oh, ineffable one. Light of the world. Yes, I know who I am. I know who I am by all this bobbery and commotion. Your Majesty, I realize I am lower than the dust. You needn't I... stress the point. We are in complete agreement. You have some dilemma involving our daughter, the Princess Ming Chu. I do, gracious presence. I... I desire her hand in marriage. Repeat that. The Princess Ming Chu and I love each other. We, well, that is, I and she and I uh, ask you to bless our union. Well, gentlemen, what do you say to that? He's a lunatic. It's a plot against the royal household. The entire dynasty. Careful, sire, he may be harboring poison. Do you have any idea, young man, how we ordinarily deal with temerity like yours? Have you ever heard of the death of a thousand cuts? Oh, I meant no disrespect, your sublime lordship. Unworthy though I am even to repeat her words, my lord. She has told me that she loves me. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. We give these girls every advantage nowadays. We cut them and pet them. And then... <laughs> oh, well. What's your name? Aladdin. From the state of your dress, I take it that you are self-employed at all? I am poor at the moment, but... But you have glowing prospects you were about to add. Your eminence has read my heart. No. Just a good deal of bad poetry on the subject. Well, my dear fellow, how are you going to prove yourself worthy of my daughter? Sire, I swear to cherish her love. Devote my every waking moment to her happiness. You move me deeply. But I prefer some a concrete evidence of your suitability as our son-in-law. Other than uh, muscles or pearly teeth, is there any, uh, <laughs> any remarkable accomplishment you can point to? Call on me, sire, I beg you. I, I do have certain extraordinary powers. Obviously. You have charmed my daughter. Perhaps you could charm me. How, Your Majesty? <laughs> Oh, anything to amuse or divert us? Some, <laughs> some magic, perhaps, like transforming an ordinary object into an article of value? If your majesty could give me a suggestion, some idea of what he means. But perhaps he could turn this into a scepter studded with jewels. <laughs> Capital. <laughs> Capital, yes, that's just what I mean. Maybe he could convert a nightingale into a peacock. <laughs> <laughs> or a swine into a unicorn. <laughs> Precisely. Precisely. A feat of leisure domain. Think you could do something of that sort? Perhaps I can. Oh, yes, Your Majesty, I know I can. You actually believe that you can effect these wonders? Remember, your head could depend on it. All these and marvels beyond mention, sire. Oh, let me return here this afternoon and you will witness such miracles as the divine gods never dreamed of. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, Millet, two o'clock sharp, but not half so sharp as the executioner's blade, should you falter even once. <laughs> you will see the incredible speed we develop in my profession. I have marked one of these bowls. <laughs> Very well, you watch. See if you can tell which is which. Aha! Aha! The hand is quicker than the eye. Which is it? 
Poor Wu Feng. Cheer up. There's lots of other occupations. Well, you wait and see. Someday I'll prove myself. Hello, mother. Oh, sorry I'm late, but something's happened. Aladdin, where have you been all this time, and why did you leave the house? I had to go out. I can't explain now, mother, but there's no reason to be alarmed. Well, that's what you say, but you're not well. Oh, I'm perfectly all right, I tell you. I had to go to the palace to see somebody. Uh-oh, here he goes again. And what do you mean by that? Do nothing, nothing oh, at mother, all. Mother, listen, that lamp, you know the one. Where did you put it? Oh, dear, I knew I shouldn't have done it. What's the matter? I must have it. Well, Aladdin, dear, it's just that a man came here, a peddler, and he took the old one. Hmm. Well, it wasn't worth anything, dear. But I told you, Mother, my life depends on that lamp. Oh, oh, where did he go, this peddler? Where did he go? Well, why that particular lamp? A lamp? Oh, Mother, I must find him. Where did he go? What did he look like? Well, he was a nice old man. He had a patch on one eye. Well, he can't have gone very far. He must be in this very street. I look through the side streets. Mm -hmm. You detain him if he comes back here. A delicious spectacle. These paltry little insects unaware of the heel about to grind them into powder. I'll teach them what it means to trifle with sewage and air is... <laughs> In the products we use, we take quality pretty much for granted. Paint, for instance, which protects and beautifies our homes, cars, furniture, even Junior's wagon. We know that a good paint must be easy to apply. It must dry to a hard, durable finish. It must stand up to all sorts of conditions. A large modern corporation never takes the quality of its products for granted. Here at DuPont's Marshall Laboratory in Philadelphia, paint is the subject of never-ending research, constant testing and retesting. Newly developed paint finishes get a real going over. In this scrubbing machine, brushes scrape at the paint back and forth thousands of times, testing its endurance trying to make sure the paint you use in your home won't come off when you wash your walls and woodwork. Here's another test in the laboratory. Burning ultraviolet lamps are aimed point blank at the paint, hour after hour. Then the paint is subjected to below freezing temperatures in this all-weather room to make sure the DuPont paint on your house will stand up under the hot summer sun or icy winter winds. Now watch what happens in this impact test. The Lucite acrylic lacquer on this panel has absorbed the shock. It hasn't chipped or cracked. And the ability to take hard knocks is an important quality for the finish on your car. It's not just inside the laboratory that paints are tested. On paint farms throughout the country, they're exposed to all kinds of weather for long periods of time. At every stage of production, from raw material to finished product, the pursuit of quality continues. It's the same with everything DuPont makes. Quality is achieved by never-ending research and testing, and backed by all the experience and resources of a large company to assure you of better things for better living through chemistry. And now the fat's in the fire. The poor simpleton staked his head on the lamp. Look at him now, scuttling through the marketplace. Excuse me, sir. You remember me, don't you? Sorry, I never saw you before in my life. You predicted my future, about my uncle returning and the things he'd bring me. Sorry, we don't guarantee results. No refunds, no exchanges. No, 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 no. It all came true, as you said. It did? <laughs> then what are you squawking I'm about? I'm not. I only wanted to ask you, have you seen an old peddler of lamps around here anywhere? Oh, yes. A, a chap came around this morning and bought a dozen lamps, just like that. There he is! There he is! Got him! Got him! Got him! Got him! Got him! Here, 
Yes, he's the one. Your name, Aladdin? Yes. Well, come along, Emperor's orders. Well, what's the matter? I haven't done anything. Well, to the Emperor wants to see you, my beauty, and that's all that matters in old Cathay. Now, wait a minute. This, this, this boy's done no harm. Indeed, who are you? The stargazer, well known in this district, a licensed practitioner. All right, stay out of this gray beard. But this... Bring him along. <laughs> The young man, you better stretch. Well, my young fellow, did you really think you could elude me? It's no good trying your magical tricks here. I've been exercising mine, thanks to this. And now that we've laid you by the heels, my pet, I must think on some punishment worthy of such a rogue. Confine him to our deepest dungeons until I decide on something sufficiently grisly. Get in there, you little Oh, listen to me, you fool. Don't you realize that wasn't the emperor? Don't you worry about that. Your troubles in this world are just about over. Your Majesty. Your Majesty, what has happened? What are you doing in here? I don't know. There was some kind of fellish rebellion. I was seized without any warning and confined here. My most trusted aides taken off. Oh, but Ling Chu, where? Oh, forgive me, Your Highness. This most insignificant of your subjects is not worthy to ask. Ming Chu, where is she? In even worse peril, I fear. As the uprising began, the princess tried to intervene and was carried away. I know not where. Oh, I've got to get out of here. Help! Someone let me out! Help! Help! Let me out! Quiet! I'm coming! You must listen to me. Quiet! Quiet! What do you want? You me a terrible mistake has been made. You must believe me. A usurper has overtaken the throne. He's plotting to have the two emperor killed. Are you sure of this? Oh, on my life. And the Princess Ming Chu has been kidnapped. And this is our true monarch? The son of heaven? Yes. The emperor of China? Yes, it is. Well, then, worship him! <laughs> he prays for the attempt, my boy, about the future. We are dealing with an adversary far more cunning than you realize. Your Majesty, I, I wish I could help you in this hour of need. I am grateful to you. But to be candid, I think our situation is very desperate Come indeed. Come on, little scorpion, in you go! Hey. What's the idea of putting me down in this section? I'm always upstairs with the regulars. Well, Fang, how did you get in here? Oh, my usual bad luck. Chap whose pocket I picked turned out to be a policeman. Who's this bird? Please, Wu Fang. This is our gracious sovereign, the Emperor of China. Bless me. What's he in for? That evil magician has cast a spell on the court and overthrown our ruler. He's done it with that magic lamp I brought home from the cave. He is the peddler that came to our house, remember? Huh? And took my lamp and left us this one. Oh, I mistrusted that man from the start. He's sneaky. Well, what did he do with Ming Chu? Oh, Ming Chu, I'd gladly give my life to know you were safe. Can I do the help? Uh, Wu Fei! Eh? Wu Fei! Eh? Now tell me, is the hand really quicker than the eye? Well, for some, perhaps. For me. Now listen to me, I've got an idea. Yes? All right, let's go! Everybody else, come on now! Hurry up! Hurry up now! Where are we going? You'll find out when you get there! March! Bring in the malefactor. But be careful, do not bruise them. This is one of the pleasures I intend to keep for my very own. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. 
to see your composed yet sullen expressions. I judge that you have composed yourselves for your lengthy journey you are about to undertake. Quite. But first I have an extra little treat. A slight diversion for the court. Someone you know very well is about to precede you on your little excursion. Please, huh? please let her go. Menchu. Yes, Menchu. a beautiful but rebellious princess. Uh, my daughter, I beseech you. Of course I shall. She's about to join her ancestors with the help of the axe of a hundred deep. But the rest of you deserve a much more blood-curdling fate. And for this I'm going to call upon an old friend. My magic lamp. But first, place the lovely lady's neck upon the cushion. No, no. Let her go. Ah, let her go. Let go. My brave but impetuous young let man her go. wishes to join his beloved. Then place his head on the block. Stop this outrage. I demand to be heard. This man has bewitched you. He is an imposter. I am your true monarch, the son of heaven, the emperor of China. Look at me. Yes, indeed, look at him. Would you any of you care to pay homage to him and risk my displeasure? Prepare the sword of a hundred teeth. Get! Get! Ah, another impatient one. I'm in no hurry. This little group seems to be unruly. Then we will we'll delay our pleasures no longer. Place his head on the block. Now, ah, one moment. Be brave, Ming Chu. I have changed my mind. I shall dispatch them in one flash with the help of my talented assistant. My talented assistant. My fellow, oh, one throw, one bow, and a thousand classes. The hand is quicker than the eye. Ah! What is your command, most potent one? Ming Chu, what do you intend to do with me? Can you read my thoughts? <laughs> when for someone to live, you have yearned and yearned, but you live without hope so far. You will soon discover your If you trust, and you must trust your destiny to your Thursday, March 27th, the DuPont Show of the Month will take great pride in presenting Charles Dickens' great masterpiece, A Tale of Two Cities, 
all of the unforgettable characters that were immortalized by Dickens will be brought to life by a distinguished cast of internationally famous stars, including Eric Portman, Agnes Moorhead, Rosemary Harris, Max Adrian, Fritz Weaver, special guest star, Gracie Fields. So be with us Thursday, March 27, when Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities comes to life on the DuPont Show of the Month. by Joe Glover. Beaver to Beaver, brought to you by Remington Rand. Crackdown, brought to you by Sicconi Mobile Oil. And Dick Powell's Zane Gray Theater, presented by the Ford Motor Company, were not seen tonight because of this special program. They will return next week at the regular times on most of these same stations. DuPont reminds you that this is National Engineers Week, a good time to call attention to the fact that the world around us is a better place because of engineering accomplishments. And a good time, too, to remind you of the great opportunities engineering offers young people as a career. Engineering builds for the future. The show of the month has been brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Cyril Richard is appearing in the stage production, A Visit to a Small Planet.